Thanks, Cam Morgan, and hi, everybody. I'm Dave Little, and this is In the Selkie. My guest tonight is Todd McCarthy. Todd, thanks for spending some time with us tonight. No, thanks very much for having me on, Dave. Great to have you here. And, okay, Todd, let's get to it. We received a request on Twitter to ask you something right off the bat. And the question is, uh, some guy, Mark McDonald, maybe you've heard of him, and you know, he, he sends in a question, and it says, now let's take a look at this. What's the deal with the gloves? All right, now what's going on? What is this all about? What are those, boxing gloves? I think, uh, you know what, it, it's hard for me to climatize coming here. From where I'm from in Australia, it was, uh, growing up, it was always pretty warm there. And uh, coming over here, the, the cold weather's been a little bit of a shock to me, so... Uh, uh, I got a bit of thick gear on, and uh, McDonald always seems to notice, and he, he likes to put a little bit of rubbish on me. Now, I hear that uh, you also put on uh, gloves underneath the gloves in order to stay warm? <laughs> Sometimes on the cold nights, there's, uh, there's hand warmers on underneath them. All right. Now, Mark uh, couldn't be with us tonight, but he wanted me to send these along <laughs> to you, some hand warmers, so that uh, the poor Australian guy doesn't get too cold yeah, on no. these uh, New Jersey nights. And it's a little fresh out there too, so thanks very much, McDonald. I appreciate it. All right, we appreciate that. And uh, again, it really is uh, kind of funny to see that stuff, but obviously uh, you can uh, do everything that you need to do that the other guys do with batting gloves. Yeah, definitely. All right. <laughs> On a serious note, you, me, and many in our industry were at the Rosen Shingle Creek Resort on February the 20th, and during the course of the Dan Patch Awards Banquet, presented by the United States Harness Riders Association, you walked away with the Rising Star Award. What was that experience like? That, that was pretty special to me, you know, it was um, moving over here last year, it was something that I would have never dreamt of, you know, being, being the recipient of that award. Um, I just had a phenomenal year and I got so many people to thank for that, but uh, it was truly, it was a real honour to accept that. You know, and the fact of the matter is, you know, you've only been here since August of 2020, it seems like you acclimated very, very quickly. Yeah, you know, I was really fortunate with, um, I think, the, the start that I had and, and uh, the, just the timing that I came in. So, um, you know, I, I had my big brother Andy here too, who was always giving me great pointers and putting me in the right direction. And uh, I just had phenomenal support for some great trainers and owners that were uh, willing to take me on and give me a go very early on. We spoke at length the last time you were on In the Sulky with me about your family. Let's give it a quick hit. You have two older, older brothers. One, of course, is Andy. He of uh, Ramona Hill, Hamiltonian fame. But you also have another older brother, uh, the eldest brother, Luke, who actually drove Muscle Hill, the best trotter I ever saw, about 12, 13 years ago. Yeah, that's right. Now, I've, uh, I'm the youngest of the family and um, probably a little bit, of, little bit of a surprise with the age gap later on that, that when I come along. But uh, no, I've got some great older siblings that are um, very talented and always looking out for me and uh, once again pointing me in the right direction. Now, also, when it comes to older siblings, you have a sister, but she's not in the horse racing game. No, i got a sister, Jody. She's, uh, she's right in the middle between my eldest brother, Luke, and, and Andy there, and uh, she's a physiotherapist. So uh, we always joke, we say she got the brains of the family. Now, finally, your dad. I think he's in the harness racing business as well. Yeah, dad's a, dad's a prominent trainer down in Australia, and uh, he has been for many years there now. Uh, he's starting to wind down a little bit now, but... Uh, yeah, hopefully soon he'll, he'd like to come over to the U.S. and play around for a couple as well. So he's still racing horses at Menangle? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, that's uh, the Meadowlands of Australia, for those of you who did not know. All right, now, you're still relatively new to the States. As I mentioned, you got here in August of 2020. But less than three months later, you teamed up with a two-year-old trotting filly by the name of Anoka Hanover to take the Goldsmith Maid for trainer Noel Daly. Let's take a look at you and Anoka in the stretch. You and she teamed up that year to go a perfect seven for seven. Tell us about the stretch run here. You know, she she just had a phenomenal year, this horse, as a two-year-old. And it's all credit to Noel Daly and the job that he did managing her. And I kind of fell into her. Um, you know, I got really lucky there to pick the drive up on her. And and uh, we just had a great run towards the end of a two-year-old season and, and, and that really, I think, helped me, uh, put me in the limelight here and, and help uh, boost my career. Ironically enough, you took over that horse from your brother Andy, who went to Canada for an extended period of time to drive some in major stakes events because of the, the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. Do you feel your success with Anoka Hanover helped you get to where you are today? Definitely. I think it was a huge part of it. Um, you know, it showed that I, I probably had that, um, that ability to, to handle horses like that. And uh, she was a little bit of a tricky horse, too, to handle, you know, a, a young two-year-old trotting filly like that. But, uh, 
no, like I say, it was it was just a great run that we had with her, and um, it, it definitely helped a lot. I know my wife Debbie did an interview with you for Harness Racing Update, and uh, you were quoted in that story as saying that there aren't a lot of trotters back in Australia. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. Not compared to here. You know, we certainly have some trotters there and, and some very handy ones too. But um, comparing the numbers to the states here and what you would drive here, um, they're very, very little compared to here. All right, let's talk about what earned you the Rising Star Award and take a look at a graphic I call Climbing His Way Up. And clearly, last year, your first full year here in the States racing at the Meadowlands, your stats really backed up that Rising Star Award. Your presence and the impact of that presence was felt immediately. Let's take a look at the numbers. During the Winter Spring Championship meeting, 81 wins, fourth in the dash third during the full meeting with 29 and for the year 110 wins the two guys in front of you they're pretty good Jingra and Dunn. Yeah definitely you know that's um for, to, to have done that in that first year like I say it's, it's a dream come true for me and um to be sitting here now and talking about it it's still pretty surreal for me I, I pinch myself and uh it's uh definitely two guys that I'm, I'm happy to be uh finishing third to in that but uh it was uh yeah like i said it was just a great year well you were a five-time driver champion at menangle and the fact that the down under trainers here likely knew about that success got you immediate steady work would you say that's accurate definitely you know it was um i had a, like i say i was pretty green when i first come but um it was just the support that i had from uh not only the down under guys but a lot of the local trainers here as well were happy to take me on and give me a shot early on and uh i can't thank everyone enough for that support I think it's safe to say that the best horse you drove last year was a Brett Pelling trainee who was a killer all year long in the age pacing division. Of course, I'm talking about Alleywag Hanover. Let's take a look at Alleywag taking the TVG Open in his last start of 2021. It was, uh, you know, this, this horse, he, he come along and I, once again, I was kind of lucky. I fell into him at the exact right time and he just comes so good towards the end of last season there. and. Uh, you know, Brett. Brett's so good at managing these horses in these big races, and every time I got on him, he, he had him spot on and ready for me. And uh, it was just, it was a great ride. We had a lot of fun, and he took me all over the countryside here, and, and even up to Canada. And uh, I just, you know, he's come back a good thing again this year. So uh, hopefully, we can have a little bit more fun with him again this year. You know, we know how good Alawag Hanover was last year. We have high expectations for him this year. Obviously, you do too. But it just seems to me he won a lot of his races with you kind of weaving your way through the stretch. He seemed to be a little bit more handy than most horses. Yeah, he is. And you know what? He's, he's a funny horse. He seems to really thrive on that sort of racing. He likes sort of working his way through the pack. And uh, when he sees daylight like, loose there he, at late, he's, uh, he's just got a wicked turn of foot. So uh, we got lucky there definitely a couple of times last season. Um, you know, and, and hopefully uh, things can go a little the same way again this year. Has Brett Pelling told you when the target date is for Ali Wag's return this year? No, not yet. But uh, as far as I know, he's coming back really well. And uh, yeah, we hope to see him soon. All right, let's fast forward to 2022. I called you two weeks ago when I was down at the dinner before you got there, the night before you got there, to grab some quotes after you won the Friday night feature with Better's Heart. Then you won the Saturday night feature with American History. Then we had to cancel the following Friday. Let's take a look at American History. You struck again with American History last Saturday to give you three straight victories in the featured race on the card. He's come back so good, this horse. He, um you know, that, that, that first start back there, we just sort of had the wide draw and we had to take him back. There was a bit of speed inside us, but his second start, it was huge. There was a massive headwind and, uh, you know, he got a little hot on me working around, but he did such a great job to finish off like he did. And uh, even that run there last week, I thought was great. It was, it was a huge last half and uh, he, he finished off again really strong. So he's, he's come back pretty exciting, that horse. He's got a lot of speed and um, no, he certainly wanted to keep an eye on. Were you afraid that Cover Bridge was going to get you? Yeah, you know, uh, all the way up the stretch, I uh, kind of was holding him off until very late. But uh, I think history knows where the line is, and uh, he just did enough to, to make sure he was going to get there on time. Apparently, it's not just the down under trainers who trust you with good horses. Tony Alanya, he doesn't have the Australian accent like you do. He's entrusted <laughs> you with American history. How good does Tony have this horse going right now? Tony's got him spot on, you know. Tony's great, and uh, he's another guy who's been fantastic to me early on and taking me on. And he's got a fantastic team of owners behind him as well that have, um, you know, been really supportive. So, so uh, 
But as far as this horse goes, he, he's got him spot on right now and uh, hopefully he can stay that way. You know, I've noticed in my many, many years here at the Meadowlands, it's awfully tough to win a third straight race, especially when you're going up against the best horses on the grounds. American History tomorrow night goes for three straight, doesn't face covered bridge, but there's let it ride along the inside there. So it's going to be another tough, 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 tough test. It definitely. You know, uh, it looks like uh, on paper, it looks like a really tough race, that race. But uh, there's some certainly some handy ones in there. But um, American History has just been so good of late and uh, no, I'm pretty confident he'll be thereabouts going into that anyway. All right, let's talk a little bit about some horses that you have on tonight's card. Let's take a look at the first race. Trackmaster rating of 77 and you have Classic Venture in there who missed a neck. Gosh darn it, that Haleyama come and get you again. Yeah, you know, he, he's a good old boy this horse and he's always thereabouts, uh, especially in this division. So um, he'll, uh, he'll be thereabouts again and I'm sure he'll give him a little shake. All right, and how about in the sixth race, number two, Lady Lou, Tony Alanya. This one has gone to the lead in two straight, but faltered late. She's, she's kind of in the same boat there. She's, uh, she fits well in here, and, um, you know, we've we got a good draw there, so that's a, that's a huge positive for her. So she's going to settle nearby, and uh, I'm sure she'll be in the finish. All right, well, Todd, uh, we really appreciate you taking some time for joining us tonight. Lots of good luck to you this weekend and during the rest of 2022. No, thank you very much, Dave. Appreciate having me on. All right, thank it's you. time for Todd to get to work. So in 60 seconds, Dave Brower will join me right there in that chair, and we'll give out tonight's weekly awards and also take a look at tonight's featured action.